All right. Well, welcome back to our discussion about Dare to Lead by Brene Brown, an awesome book because it's not um, it's not just about leadership. It's really uh, about leading ourselves too. But I am with my great friend Scott and myself, hey. Nathan. Um, we are having these discussions to really continue the recovery conversation, care conversation. Um, and of course, we want to keep these going, even for those who are not with us in person for our CR meetings, Celebrate Recovery on Monday nights at 7 p.m. So we are continuing on uh, this part one, which uh, she said, Brene Brown says is the most fundamental skill to learn, which is, in her words, rumbling with vulnerability. And we've gone through four sections so far. This one is called curiosity and grounded confidence. Now, there, her tagline says, self-awareness and self-love matter, because who we are is how we lead. Um, and I know, Scott, you highlighted quite a bit about grounded confidence. So yes. maybe a little definition, maybe your thoughts on what she means by grounded confidence. Yeah, well, as I was joking with Nathan before we started, I think I've highlighted like a third of this chapter. And I do want to encourage you to pick up this book there. It's really outstanding in so many ways. And there, there are so many parallels here to what the scriptures teach and to recovery. And I want to make some of those recovery connections in this session today. But uh, at the risk of reading this whole chapter to you, which I won't, I do want to, I do want to read at least part of her opening paragraph, which hopefully will raise your appetite to check this book out. But briefly, she says that grounded confidence is this messy process of learning, unlearning, practicing, and failing. And she says it's this brand of confidence uh, that's not, it's not bragging or boasting. It's not um, posturing, as she says. It's real, solid, and it's built on self-awareness and practice. And so ground, grounded confidence in so many ways, we've heard this again and again in books that we've read recently, mm -hmm. self-awareness. It's almost like self-awareness is a buzzword. Now it's not new to the scriptures. Uh, for example, the apostle Paul said, um, um, what did he say? Uh, to, to, to basically take a look at your heart to see if you are in the faith. Now that's, that's quite a self-awareness check. Um, but again and again, the scriptures tell us to know who we are, know what's going on, be aware, God reveal um, my intentions, intentions that I may not even see. But self-awareness is a huge part of grounded confidence. And she goes on to say, once we witness how courage can transform the way that we lead, and I would add in terms for our practices here, the way that we live our lives, she said, we can basically strip off that armor, those masks that we tend to wear um, that keep us really small and keep us hiding. And we can exchange that for a grounded confidence that lifts us up and supports our efforts to be right. brave. You know, just commenting on, on when you're saying buzzword, I, I actually think that pre-industrial revolution there was simply more time for the reflection things that people talk about now like getting back in touch with nature going on walks being outside and especially during covid there was a large increase in that um to to people's benefit of course so i i think that it just is is resurfacing um because of this move toward wow you know in my daily life, I just never gave enough time or had enough time um, uh, to do self-awareness activities. So, um, but she does say that it is a, a skill 
she does say that these are about developing disciplined practices of rumbling with vulnerability or growing in self-awareness. Um, it's not just uh, something that you can hear about and automatically you have it. Um, it's kind of a way of life. Um, and I love on this, this, there's a portion where she's talking to, uh, I believe, a CEO about their leaders. And I wanted to bring this up because what, they, what he says, I do think, has a faith element to it. Mm. So the CEO is explaining, when leaders don't have the skills to lean into vulnerability, they're not able to successfully hold the tension of the paradoxes that are inherent in entrepreneurship. Now, I, I think that we could even replace entrepreneurship with our faith because he does say things like optimism and paranoia, obviously in business, um, left brain and right brain, which we have definitely talked about. Yes. Humility and fierce resolve, which I think is, is relatable. Thinking global acting local, uh, thinking big, starting small, marathons and sprints. Now, I, I think of these things and I think of other paradoxes that we have, sort of like when <clears throat> in the New Testament where it says, you know, uh, to die is gain. Uh, if you want to keep your life, you must lose it. Um, and there are many others, right? Other paradoxes. And some of those are just hard and, and we think of balance, but I think that this is um, staying a better word, which is tension. It's more of a two ends of a rope that need to be just held tightly rather than a seesaw, um, in my opinion. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and part of that tension is when I walk into a room, thinking back to our book on the other half of church mm -hmm. um, part of that tension is I walk in and I see that I'm part of a a community that is glad that I am there and I can see that because I can see some level of joy on their face right um, which by the way I won't I'll just say recently somebody said to me how meaningful it is to him that he walks into a celebrate recovery meeting and I'm I give him nux. And he said, You won't know how you'll never know how much that means to me. And I thought, wow, I mean, that is so yeah. cool that mm -hmm. we are giving meaning, and that's part of our grounded confidence is found in our relationship with Christ and in our relationship with each other. Right. Right. And um, and then go ahead. And I think no, go ahead. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna uh, relate this to to recovery. Something mm -hmm. that she says about being curious. Did you want to say some more about grounded confidence? Just before you go into the curious, because I know that's our next section. I I just want to say she she does try and really emphasize that in no in no way, shape, or form does she expect this to be easy. She constantly is saying it is hard. But in practice, when you've developed it long enough, it does become more practiced, it, meaning maybe not easier, but definitely you're able to keep going with it. You're able to dare greatly um, because you've been practicing it. Um, she even says easy is overrated. And I, and I definitely highlighted this where it says easy learning does not build strong skills. And she says that's research-based. Um, but how often do we want something, you know, to come, we just wish it would come easier to us. And in reality, that doesn't build strong skills for us. It's something Steve, uh, I won't say his full name, but he was mentioning in a meeting that recovery happens not when we're at the, at the CR meeting, but it happens when we leave mm. and basically meaning you're recovering when you're going about your daily life, making good decisions. You know, you're building in that strong habit of not, not giving in to 
uh, to that habit or hurt every single time that it, it comes up in our mind. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and I, 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 wanna, I just, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I want to add to that. Having just come off of last night's celebrate recovery meeting. And of course I won't mention any names, but in general, I want to say, as it relates to grounded confidence to, to, after the large group meeting, we have a small group meeting, men with men, women with women. And I was so humbled to sit there in the group where we were mm -hmm. all sharing basically whatever we wanted to. We have three to five minutes and effectively sharing how, kind of sharing how our week was, but more how we're doing as individuals. Yeah. And you want to talk about grounded confidence to hear these men share their struggles and their successes and just to be so open and honest I, I i was asked to pray at the end and i just i just thank god for that kind of a setting where you can go and you can say this is what's going on this is you know people aren't sharing all the details but they are sharing a little bit more than you normally hear and you kind of you're I'm sitting in that meeting thinking, wow, we are all well, I'm putting words to what I was feeling then, but like we're fully alive in this moment. I and mean, you talk right. about grounded confidence to be with right. others who are being humble, being vulnerable, rumbling with their vulnerability, struggle, you know, it, it's really uh, grounding to be in a group like that. I mean, by the end of this chapter, she does say these three things things practicing vulnerability becoming self-aware and engaging in tough conversations those all apply to that kind of conversation you're saying in the in the small groups um and and i do think you hit it right on the head when you say fully alive is continuing to practice those things in a group of people where where you can go ahead and keep practicing you can say it you know there's this emotional roller coaster along with it when you're saying things out loud that would be hard to say to you know in a normal setting um but i know that we want to talk about curiosity though so what does curiosity have to do with grounded confidence scott yes well she says she gives a little formula here so hang with me again we're hoping you pick up the book but she says grounded confidence equals rumble skills plus curiosity, plus practice, meaning practice is just as you would think about it on a sports team or with a, an instrument mm -hmm. or with anything you want to learn. You just do it again and again and again. So we, we have this vulnerability and we add to that curiosity and then we keep practicing. But on the curiosity side, she says that curiosity in and of itself is an act of vulnerability and cur uh, courage, which I would it really struck me as interesting. I, but the more I read, I thought, you know, she's right. If, if I'm in a group meeting and I think objectively, maybe everybody's as curious as I am. Maybe I just don't have strong enough breaks on my thoughts all the time. And I just tend to say more what I'm thinking. And, and most people are, are checking their thoughts, which probably is a lot of wisdom in that. But nonetheless, curiosity, when you put things out there that you're thinking, it, it is vulnerable. Like, you don't know what somebody's going to say. How many times have I held back two-thirds of the way through a conversation when I should have said, can I hit pause for a moment and ask, what are we talking about here? But rather, I'll stay quiet and just hope I can eventually mm -hmm. figure it out. Um, but it is an act. Curiosity mm -hmm. is an act of vulnerability and mm -hmm. of courage and she goes on to say she quotes this study from the journal i love this the journal's called neuron that's awesome um yeah, suggested that the brain's chemistry changes when we become curious now if mm -hmm. we're in the throes of addiction we would want to know what changes the ba the brain's chemistry because that will help to change the way we think and the way we act at least right it could possibly. Well, being curious helps to change the brain's mm -hmm. chemistry. 
helping us better learn and retain information. Mm -hmm. But she says curiosity is uncomfortable because it involves uncertainty and vulnerability. We're kind of putting ourselves out there and letting people know what we actually think. And if they think, who knows what they'll think when we say this, it may cause us not to say it. But I read that mm -hmm. and I thought, I wrote this down as it relates to recovery. What if in the midst of my addiction, I become curious enough to ask the question? Now, again, this would take vulnerability and courage to ask this question. What might my life look like if I were able to move beyond this struggle or this addiction or uh, this hurt, this habit or this hang? Oh, uh, powerful my, question. Yeah. And I thought, wow. Now, I'm not saying I want it to look like some idealized version of what I think your life is like, but what might my life look like if I could move beyond this? And when I meet with men to do counseling, yeah, I kind of go, I don't know if this is the best technique or not, but sometimes early on, sometimes a little later in the counseling relationship, I will say something like, can you imagine your life if you can move I'm not saying you'll never struggle with this, but if you can take steps forward to the point where yeah. it is not constantly pulling you back, can you imagine the the impact you could have on other men? Yeah. And that's what I'm doing. Like, what might your life look like if you were able to move beyond this? You know, I've I've heard in some cases that a question can be more powerful than an answer. Because having that question in front of you as the guiding motivation, and again. Some may answer it, but even if you're holding the question up and saying, but I'm going to let the answer unfold as I just hold up the question and as I'm overcoming the hurt or habit, um, it kind of does remind me of one of the books that we talked about, Man's Search for Meaning, where he said, I don't know if it's a lot logo therapy or logo therapy, but, um, mm -hmm. but holding that idea up definitely creates this sense of what am I moving toward instead of just what am I trying to get out of, you, you know? Yes. I do yes. think there is definitely a difference, um, even though it feels like it's just two sides of the same thing. Yep. So, so. be curious, ask questions. Right. Um, right. But again, recognize asking questions does require vulnerability and it requires mm -hmm. strength so i know that um brene brown actually has a dare to lead section on her website with uh resources questions i mean and even in this chapter she listed some great starter questions on how to present a more vulnerable conversation uh or a tough conversation all really well done. They even have role play videos, which I think that you've seen. Um, and so this concludes part one, which is rumbling with vulnerability. And again, we, we love the kind of material that she's presenting. So we encourage you to pick it up. Otherwise, we hope to see you Monday at seven o'clock or maybe uh, online um, when you're watching one of our videos with us. And we will see you next time, guys. See ya.